Devereaux! I'm Mr. Devereaux. Beethoven's fifth. <laughs> I never said I was more than I am. Welcome everyone, episode 55 of Kiss Me's Podcast. One of your hosts, Eli Clausen. And I'm the cat man. And I am Paul. <laughs> As you have a cat literally cross behind you. Um... So, Happy New Year to everyone. Hope everyone had a great, safe New Year. Um, excited to see what the year brings for the podcast and uh, the bands and everything, too. So, um, Quick apologies for last week's episode. Uh, apparently, <clears throat> during the rendering process, it somehow screwed up the whole episode. and um, It just kind of started in a random position. Brenton brought that to my attention yesterday. and Sure enough, that's how it had rendered, so... Um, I guess at least was something on there and instead of nothing, so <laughs> um, I don't think it cut off too much of the show. But anyway, just wanted to apologize for that. And also, now that the uh, holidays and crap are over, you should be seeing this on a more normal schedule now instead of the day before we film the next episode. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so everyone, have a great New Year. What'd you guys do? Went to bed early. <laughs> yeah, went to bed early. Band practice all day. Band <laughs> practice all day, yeah. <laughs> wow, so um, big big exciting piece of uh, KISS-related news popped up yesterday that I wasn't even aware that was going to happen was um, Ace Fraley. He, uh, okay, so every year, hockey, they do this big, like, you know, special game where they play it in, like, a baseball stadium you know, it's like a big deal. They aired on national TV. Well, they had Ace play, um, I, I think it was the pregame show. And it was, he had his band with him. He They played New York Groove, because I guess that's, you know, the big song in New York. Obviously, I guess, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the New York Mets baseball team, I guess every time they win a game, they play that song in, over the PA uh, the New York Giants football, every time they score a touchdown, they play that song in the stadium. So, didn't know that either. That's pretty cool. Um, so, they asked Ace to come play, and uh, they they did that song. And um, the I believe it was the New York Rangers hockey team. They gave Ace a you know, customized jersey with his name on the back. And uh, it was pretty cool. It so- sounded really good. Um, you know, Ace was all into it. Uh Saw a little interview clip uh, before we got on here that Ace did before the game started, and uh, it was a pretty interesting interview too. So, although I think he's going deaf a little bit because I noticed in recent interviews he seems to have a hard time hearing people, and he's always huh huh or I can't hear a thing you say. <laughs> you got to like yell at him now. What'd you say? I didn't get that last part. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that was pretty cool because, um, you know, otherwise it was going to be another, you know, pretty quiet week in the KISS world as far as news, and that just kind of pops up out of the blue, and, you know, bam, you know, the, what, New Year's Day and KISS-related Kiss, Kiss related stuff going on right off the bat with Ace, so that that was cool to see in here. Um, again, hopefully this will be the year that Ace puts out the next album and maybe the new book and who knows what, and, um hoping he uh continues to tour and hits this area this time or would love to see him show up at the indie expo this year would love to meet him uh that would be awesome too so who knows we'll see what happens but um so did you guys happen to get a chance to watch the clip of it yet or anything or i didn't watch i didn't watch the whole thing because you know i was sort of I seen it, and then it's like <clears throat> I need to watch that later. And then when I got home, obviously I had to get ready to be on. <laughs> but then I forgot. You wasn't in the New York groove to see it yet. <laughs> I was in the Ohio groove. <laughs> yeah, the uh, 
blizzard temperatures, or, or not blizzard temperatures, but arctic temperatures right now. My brain's still frozen. It's so freaking cold. I literally well, could not think of anything else to talk about at the well, moment. Was, there was something that I've seen on, I don't know if you if you guys are familiar with uh, Nikki Six's show, Sixth Sense. Yes. Well, uh, he has another show that he had started, I don't know how long ago. It's called uh, My Favorite Riff. Oh, yeah. I think I heard something about that. Yeah, and he interviews guitarists, and they play a little bit of their favorite songs that they uh-huh. you know started getting them into guitar, and then they play some of their own stuff, and they talk to them and stuff. Well, uh, <clears throat> and by the way, the one with John Five on there is, it's, I can't believe John, I oh. mean, I already knew John Five was a good, good guitar player, but my God. Yeah. But anyway, um, the last one I watched was uh, Joe Bonamassa. Oh, yeah. Is that how you say his name? And he was talking to him, and he said, I'm pretty sure it was that it, that uh, episode, um, that his drummer in his band is, um, what's the guy that played with Ace Frehley? Can't think of his name. Anton Fig. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's no the drummer kidding. in his band. It's like, because you know David Letterman's no longer, so right. it obviously has to do something. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what he might have been up to now with that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like wow, that's really cool. That's that crazy because I know Joe. He comes to this area quite a bit. He usually pl- plays at the Phrase. I know he's played there. <clears throat> I hadn't heard you know his music, but I hear people talk about him a lot. Now I know why, <laughs> because it's like he played some stuff on there. It's like oh my god. Yeah, my yeah. one of my uncles is uh, real big on him, and I wasn't that familiar either, and. Um, I'd run, I'd run across like some of his CDs at the library, so I'd pick them up and, you know, burn them and stuff. And I saw, you know, he was in the area. I wanted to go see him, but then his tickets were actually a little pricey and I think they would. <laughs> haven't gotten around to it yet. But I mean, if he, if he comes back, I, I would really like to try to go yeah. see him. I'd like to see him too. After watching that interview, uh, and actually, uh, John Five is on tour right now, and he's going to be in February. He's going to be in Lexington. Oh. And he's going to be in Louisville, Lexington, and I want to say maybe Cleveland, but uh, I think tickets are only like eighteen dollars. Really? Or something that, like that, that. That would be cool to see, man. Yeah. Is there it's anybody? A, it, it's his band. Is there anybody like known that's in his band or? Uh, it's just a trio, as far as I know. Oh wow! It's, uh, John Five and the Creatures. <laughs> nice. The name of the band. But nice. it's all. I think the majority of the music, if not all of it, is instrumental. Sort of like Steve Vai, Joe Satriani type stuff. Oh yeah. But it's a lot more uh, experimental. I think They're just a little bit that I've heard so far. Yeah, I know. I said it just last week or the week before, but I definitely still want to find his album because mm-hmm. God, he's amazing. <laughs> And, he, and he's a Kiss fan. Exactly. Huge. Huge Kiss fan. That'd be cool to have him on the show. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look into it. Well, I was watching, after I watched that, I started looking up John 5 stuff <clears throat> on YouTube. And I was watching this one clip of uh, when it, it was Rob Zombie. It was the concert, and uh, he just started playing stuff, and he would look at Rob to see if he wanted to sing it or not, and then he'd go to the next, you know, he'd just play the, the riff or whatever, and then they, they went into a, what was the song they played? Oh, they did uh, Sweet Dreams Oh, by the Eurythmics, and he said, are you, well, by Marilyn Manson, because John Five used to be, he yeah. said, he said, John Five's having a flashback, <laughs> but they did Sweet Dreams, and it was really cool. Wow. Man, see that that's crazy too because Zombie played right there at the Rose, you know what? Yeah. Last he year, was so. River Band too. Yeah, man. <sighs> I wouldn't like to know, but I know that happens every year. There's always so many concerts that pop up, especially at the Rose. Even like I try to, you would think of any place like that would be the one that I would go see the most since I yeah, live right like by it. Back doorstep, isn't it. Yeah, but then it's like <laughs> things happen, so. <laughs> What's it take you like what five minutes to get there maybe? Yeah, if that probably. <laughs> and it sucks because like you know I'm a huge Sadesky Trucks man fan, and they've been at the Rose the last uh, I think three years in a row now since it opened. 
Well, I don't think it's going to happen this year because from what I heard, they're going to do more of a uh, intimate type of uh, tour this year. So like the smaller, you know, indoor. Like kinda. Weird Al. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I don't think they're going to be hitting the roads this year. Not necessarily anywhere uh, close for that matter, but oh well, I'll, I'll keep tabs on that too. But Hey Luke, I'm curious, what was the last concert you went to? Oh, uh, Overkill. Oh, really? Yeah, saw Havoc and, uh, oh, crap, I can't remember the middle band. They were another one that was relatively well-known. Crowbar. Oh, yeah. Havoc, Crowbar and Overkill. That was that was a pretty good concert. I bet. I, uh, I have to admit, and, and I, maybe I'm just not a concert goer unless I need to go to more classic concerts where everybody's too old for this, but I just, I just cannot handle mosh pits. <laughs> I, I don't like them. I wish they didn't exist. And, and I have to say that it was super annoying when I'm standing there trying to enjoy the band and I have to watch to make sure I don't get, you know, my butt kicked in the middle. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I never have been much into that. Uh, the first concert I ever went to was Slayer so, of course, you know, it's going to be like that. And it's like, I didn't even get near that if I could. I was trying to stay as far back as I could away from that. Oh, oh yeah. What was your last one, Brenton? Um. Oh, man. Uh, I want to say it was Ann Wilson of Heart, but it seems like it went to someone else after that. Hmm. That was at, at the Rose. Yeah. That would have been good. Yeah, she can still sing really good. Um, I can't remember who the seems like there was one right after that. I would have liked to have seen the Trans Siberian Orchestra, but I hear it's impossible to get a ticket to that. I don't know. <laughs> That's usually a pretty good show. I'm trying to think myself. I think I think the last one might have been Tedeschi Trucks at the Rose, and they had uh, the Wood Brothers and Hot Tuna opened up. That was a really good show, as always. Um, surprisingly, they haven't announced much for this year yet. I think they've only made two announcements so far officially. So, waiting to see what who all is going to come this year. So, so far it's just Jethro Tull and then uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short. They do a little music thing, and you know Steve Martin's real good on the banjo and stuff. So, I, I'd like to see that. And just again, see. Uh, has um. Paul announced the actual dates of his Soul Station. I mean, I know it's not over here anywhere, but... Yeah, as far as I know, it's just those Japan dates now, so I don't just know. <clears throat> I'm not sure if he's going to do a, a American tour yet, because maybe they're, maybe they're planning to do something with KISS, whether it's recording or... So maybe that could be the reason. I don't know. Or maybe he well, just I'm wants still to... <laughs> I'm still hung up on the fact that, you know, and I said this on a previous episode where someone had asked him on the cruise about Gene Simmons, you know, doing the vault tour. And he said he's not doing a vault tour. <laughs> still hung up on that idea. It's like, okay, well, what does he know that he doesn't <laughs> want to say? Yeah, that too. <laughs> I know, I mean, I know Kiss did book some dates, you know, for uh, what Spain mostly is what it sounds like right now. Um, yeah, so Barcelona is that the first one? Yes, and then they they just recently announced like I guess it's a huge festival over there that they're headlining too. So I mean I mean I guess so I, I, I'm I, oh, yeah. God I can't talk today. <laughs> I get I guess all in all it's not necessarily a kissless year because I mean they are going to do some shows here and there, but I don't, at least here in the states it it, it just kind of feels that way because as of now there's no you know. Shows, right now, shows so booked here. And, those that are headed to Portugal, and Megadeth is the opener. Oh. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I'd love to see that. Not like that 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 big Rock on the Range festival that they hold in Columbus. I've never been to one yet. Yeah, I've been Every year I keep getting closer. Like I'd like to go. Well, this year I would like to go because Tool is headlining. And... I've never seen them, and there's, you know, tons of other bands that I, I love that are playing that show as well that I'd love to see. Uh, not only is Tool playing, but Perfect Circle is going to play it too on a different day. 
Yeah. Oh, John Five's going to be in Newport. Yeah. That's even closer. That's in Columbus, isn't it? No, that's Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Newport, Kentucky. Oh, Newport, Kentucky. Okay. That's uh, February 22nd. That'd be a great show. It says here they're getting ready to put out a live album. John Five oh. and the Creatures called It's Alive. I definitely have to get that. So two two LP colored vinyl limited pressing. Oh god. I like the the first song's called Gu Guitars, Tits and Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to buy that just because of that now. <laughs> <laughs> Track three, six hundred and sixty six pickers in Hell, California. <laughs> They've got imaginative titles. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the nut love. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I like. I'm going to pick yeah, that up. This is the recent post that came up on my Instagram feed. This is John Five's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you said most of their stuff's instrumental, right? From what I can tell, I haven't heard any vocals, so I don't know if he sings or not, but... That's awesome. I'm totally down with instrumental. That's Yeah, it's really cool. And I guess he was really, according to what he was saying to Nikki Six on that show, he was he was real influenced uh, by Hee Haw. <laughs> uh, that was his first exposure to music, was Hee Haw. So he learned to pick, uh, you know, like they were doing like Buck Owens and stuff, and, and he has a lot of those types of guitars because he didn't know that there was any other type. You know, when he was, when he first saw that, yeah, you know, that's all he thought there was. <clears throat> so, I think that's really interesting because a lot of maybe guitar players can't can't or don't want to play, you know, like that. But he can play pretty much anything, I guess, in between too. That's wow. awesome. Yeah, he he comes up with some insane stuff, man. It's hmm. oh, he... yeah. They were joking. It said. Uh, uh, they said that they could start a band together with John Five, Nikki Six, and he said he'd have to find someone named Seven and Eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Looks like he's even got a couple of tab books out too. I guess he teaches guitar. Someone, or he was saying something about. I don't know if he still does or he used to mm -hmm. be a guitar teacher because he originally started out. He just wanted to be a session musician. Is all he wanted to do. Um, and then he got offered to tour with Joan Jett, or not Joan Jett, Lee Bird, and um, that was his first tour, I guess, so then the rest, is he's been with bands all the time. Wow. Yeah, let's try to go to that Newport show. Yeah, um, the cat are seriously considering it. Yeah. It's honest. That's probably the closest one. I, I don't remember. Yeah, it is. Because the other, the only Ohio date is Cleveland, and that's actually farther <clears throat> than going down to Newport, obviously. So, yeah, Newport is. Uh, I thought originally that that was for country bands, but I guess not. Because <laughs> I think Junior Brown was down there one year. I wanted to go see him. I never did. Oh, I love this album cover. One of his albums is called Remix Exploitation. And the album cover looks like the uh, Hendrix Electric Lady Lane, the one with all the nude chicks on it. Oh, really? It's got a bunch of na naked chicks. <laughs> you mean like baby chickens? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so he's actually got what three? Good God, he's got like nine albums. Does he really? Yeah. Wow. Started putting them out in 04. I had no idea he had that many. <laughs> <laughs> Put that through time, but I can't get it to stick. All right, I shall return. All right. So whoever wins this week will get the VHS copy of Debbie Does Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I got uh, pretty much the same layout as last time. I've got five 
categories. You guys can choose which one you want to do. They're all multiple choice. They all have five possible answers, and let's face it, the fifth answer is always the correct answer. <laughs> uh, and each of you have a skip you can use if you want to. Which nobody's okay. used the skip yet. Right. There were definitely questions last week that I'm like, why didn't they use the skip? <laughs> so what are the uh, what are the topics this week, Vanna? A little, little weird this time. We got Kiss Guitars, Kiss Quotes, Kiss Songs, Kiss Studio Albums, and Kiss Shows. So four questions in each topic. Brant is still the reigning champion, so I think we've been doing uh, He Goes First, right? Since he keeps yes, winning. Yes, yes. And actually, can you <laughs> say those one more time? Because it's going to be a little harder to... Remember yeah. what those are this time. Not quite as last time. So it's okay. guitars. Right. Quotes. Cadillacs, hillbilly music. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you quiz me on the white yoke come on. Quotes. Songs. Songs. Studio albums. Okay. And shows. Shows, okay. All right. Branton, you first. Which one you want to do? Uh, I think I'll do Kiss, kiss Shows. Okie dokie. And this is concerts, right? Not like TV, sh like literal shows. <laughs> yes, concert, yes. Yes. Okay. On August 20th, 1976, which was during the Destroyer tour, KISS played a show to 42,000 people, which was by far their largest attendance to that date. In what city did that show take place? Was it El Paso, Texas? Atlanta, Georgia? Anaheim, California? Toronto, Ontario, Canada? Or Greenville, Ohio? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'll just say Anaheim. Correct. <laughs> Okie dokie, Eli. Let's do... Let's do guitars. Okay. Paul Stanley first debuted his signature Ibanez PS10 Iceman on what album's tour? Was it Destroyer? Love Gun? Rock and Roll Over, Dynasty, or that one tour where they played I Finally Found My Way, Talk to Me, Read My Body, and the entire Peter Chris solo album <laughs> at every show. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Love Gun. Incorrect. Uh, Brent. Dynasty. Also incorrect. It was Rock uh, and Roll Over. Rock and Roll Over? Hmm. Yeah. Wow. That surprised me a little bit. It, uh, the first time he used it was when they went to Japan in spring of 77, which was Rock and Roll Over. Oh. Wow. Weird. Now, was that the was that the one that was like the, um, I don't know what you call it, The it wasn't the black one, it was like a wood-colored one. Is that what I'm thinking yeah. of? Okay. Right. So, which he so, didn't use very much. Because it got stolen, right? I think so. I think that was the story, yeah. I don't know. See, I, I was thinking of the cracked mirror one as the one I had in my head. Uh, that was why I said seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. I, pr I probably just made myself even wronger by adding all that stupidness to it. <laughs> <laughs> it, had, it had six strings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, back to Brent then. Uh, kiss quotes. Okay. <coughs> Who said, you can't go through life and leave things the way they are. We can all make a difference, and if I die today, I'll know I made a difference. Was it Paul Stanley, Ace Freely, Bruce Kulick, Gene Simmons, or Jason Voorhees? <laughs> um... 
<laughs> Jason Voorhees. I'll say Paul Stanley. Incorrect. Uh, Eli. <laughs> I'm going to go with Ace Frehley. Mm, also incorrect. Ah! It's Gene. Jason. Jason. I, I Jason. never would have thought. Jason. <laughs> wow. Have we, neither of us has gotten anything right yet, have we? Yeah, Brenton did. Brenton got the oh, first one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, let's do, hey, let's, let's do songs. Okay. I went the wrong direction. There we are. The Lyric. You're like a cat on a hot tin roof. I love it when you scratch and bite. You got my heart and a hangman's noose. Pull the rope and make it tight. Comes from what kiss song? Give me more. You love me to hate you. Love's a deadly weapon. Hell or high water. Or an unreleased 36 minute epic demo called The Underwater Adventures of Frank the Chameleon. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Now I for now I've forgotten <laughs> what those first ones were. The actual answers. Yeah. More. You love me to hate you. Love's a deadly weapon. Or hell or high water. Uh, I'm gonna take a skip. Okie dokie. And that skips the whole question, right? Yes. Okay. Brandon, do you want to guess it just for the hell of it? I'd say uh, love's a deadly weapon. Ah, uh, it was you love me to hate you. Ah. Uh. Such a weird song. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, I guess does the skip count as those original, or do you have like a separate thing? You know what I mean. Like, does the skip question just come out of the main set of questions, or do you have like a separate set of questions for? I actually didn't make a separate set of questions. Okay. Well, let, let's stick with songs. Okay. Which of the following Kiss songs was not released as a single? And that's at any point throughout their whole career. Deuce, Rocket Ride, Killer, Hard Luck Woman, or the audio from Gene Simmons' sex tape? <laughs> so is this considered A and B side or just the A side that was a single? Just the A side. Okay. <clears throat> um... That would be Deuce. Exactly. Okay, we're one and one. Brandon, what you got? Deuce. Uh, well, yeah, let's do Kiss songs. Okay. Which of the following Kiss songs from the 80s does not contain a guitar solo in its studio version? Rock and Roll Hell, The Oath, Uh, All Night, Lick It Up, or all of the songs from Unmasked that Peter played on, as well as all of the songs from Creatures of the Night that Ace played on. <laughs> That's a little uh, tricky, I think. We'll see. Um, uh, I knew the answer, and now I forgot what it was. Because um, I'm still thinking of the last one. It's like, <laughs> kind of thing. it's like I don't need to think about that. <laughs> um, what was the the rest of the answers again? <laughs> Rock and roll hell, the oath, uh, all night, and lick it up. Lick it up. Correct. And that's odd because they've always played a solo live. I think. Yeah. Like an extended solo, really. Totally. Yeah. Uh, let's do let's do studio albums. Kidoki. Which two songs from Animalize feature guitar solos from Bruce Kulick instead of Mark St. John? I've had enough and get all you can take. Lonely as the hunter and while the city sleeps. Lonely as the hunter and murder in high heels. Thrills in the Night and Murder in High Heels, or Eight Mile and the Real Slim Shady? <laughs> uh, thrills in the Night and Murder in High Heels. Incorrect. Oh. Um, 
<laughs> I can't remember any of the rest of them. <laughs> What's the rest of them again? Uh, I've had enough and get all you can take. Lonely is the hunter and while the city sleeps. And lonely is the hunter and murder in high heels. Lonely is the hunter and while the city sleeps. Also incorrect. Mm. It was lonely as the hunter and murder in high heels. Uh, I was half right. <laughs> half a point. Nah. <laughs> okay, I believe we are two and one, and it's Brandon's turn. Um, what was the other? There's guitarist quotes, shows, and what was the other ones? Studio albums. Okay. And, uh, and songs. What else? Song, or yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's do studio albums. Okay. Which two songs from Lick It Up were not co-written by Benny Benson? Fits Like a Glove and Dance All Over Your Face, A Million to One and Not for the Innocent, Young and Wasted and And on the Eighth Day, Fits Like a Glove and All Hell's Breaking Loose, or Complicated and Skater Boy? <laughs> Uh, a million to one, and whatever the other one was. Incorrect. Uh. What was the other one on that? <laughs> uh, not for the innocent. Okay. Um, fits like a glove. The first one fits like a glove, and whatever. Was it uh, fits like a glove and dance all over your face, or yeah. fits like a glove and all held? Yeah. Yep. Indeed, correct. I had no idea. <laughs> I honestly, I had to look at Wikipedia for that. I was not expecting Fitz to not have a co-write. That's a little well, surprising. My logic at first was just because Paul Stanley does a million to one, I would expect, you know, to him to be writing with Gene more. Yeah. I assumed because the demo of Fitz is just Gene, and he's basically showing the whole, you know, layout and playing the guitar. Yeah. Dooku daka, dooku daka, dooku. <laughs> Yeah, both of those songs actually are the only songs on Lick It Up at all that only have one writer, believe it or not. It's Gene on both of those, and all the rest of the songs are somebody and somebody else. Which ones of those songs are you guys doing of the tribute band? Fitz. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Fitz and Hell, Hell's Breaking Loose. And Complicated and Skater Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured Gino singing Skater Boy <laughs> doing, so. doing the yeah. leg, leg thing That should be another set list that you guys make up of other people's songs <laughs> <laughs> Son and That would be so awesome <laughs> Oh my god <laughs> Yeah, you, should, you guys should make a list just hypothetically what songs would be ridiculous for you guys to do? It'd be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so now we're two and two. I believe it's Eli's turn. Let's go back to guitars. Already. So I can make myself look idiotic again. <laughs> <laughs> Who designed several strange guitars, including Gene's second axe bass, Paul's Star Guitar, and Ace's Light Up Less Paul, all designed for Kiss in 1979. Was it Ron Nevison, Steve Carr, Gary Kramer, Joe Valdez, or Toucan Sam? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I think it's Joe Valdez. Incorrect. He did design uh, Gene's first axe base. Uh, uh, Gary Kramer, is that the other one? That was another, also incorrect. Mm. Uh, yep, Steve Carr. Ah, let's see, that was my first choice. and I, yeah, I was going to say the same one you did, Eli, but then you yeah. stole my answer. <laughs> my wrong answer. I stole your love. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he was... Uh, Told Steve you I was... Carr so Ace's guitar tech for a long time. I think he they said he designed the rocket shooting out of the headstock thing. And then he, he was, and then he became the second drummer. Right, yeah. Steve Carr. <laughs> exactly. 
See, I told you I'd make myself look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't guess two cans of ham. Well, that was actually... Uh, Toucan Sam designed the triggers for Peter's drums. We all yes. know that. Yes. Okie dokie. Brandon, what you got? Uh, let's do um, the albums. Okie dokie. Find the page here. Okay. What is the ninth song on the official version of Monster? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the best kind of questions. Back to the Stone Age, All for the Love of Rock and Roll, Out of This World, The Devil is Me, or a U.S. only bonus track called Quit Believing in Yourself, It's Annoying. <laughs> okay, so it wouldn't matter if we're talking about the, the album with the bonus track or not, right? Right. right. Um, all for the Love of Rock and Roll? Incorrect. Uh, Out of This World. Correct. Best song on the album. Oh, yeah. Although, to your credit, though, the All for the Love of Rock and Roll, Out of This World, and The Devil Is Me are like 8, 9, and 10 or yeah. something. So they're all right there. Let's do... Uh, are, are any of them closed out yet? No. Okay. Uh, let's do quotes. Okay. <clears throat> Who said, we're really in control? That's the difference. We were out of control then. Eric Carr, Ace Freely, Peter Chris, Paul Stanley, or Silent Bob? Peter Chris. Correct. The only reason I said that is because out of control. And that's the name yep. of his album. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he gave it away, didn't he? Yeah. Or George Chris, I meant. I'm sorry. Right, George Chris. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's go with... Uh, let's go with quotes again. Okay. For 500. <laughs> 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 Who said, finding a good band is like finding a good wife. You got to keep trying until you find the right one. Was it Ace, Bruce, Eric Singer, Peter, or Hal Keller? Um, Bruce. Incorrect. Oh. Gene? Well, that wasn't one of the choices. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Should be... Uh, uh, Ace, Eric Singer, or Peter, or Helen Keller? Eric Singer. Also incorrect. It was Ace. Oh! Wow. Again, I second guess myself. <laughs> uh, shows. Okay, where are we at here? Ah. Oh, this one, this one I had a feeling you might know. At what venue was the Animalize Uncensored MTV special filmed? The Cobo Hall, Long Beach Arena, New Haven Coliseum, Wembley Arena, or Gene's Mom's Backyard? <laughs> uh, Cobo Hall. Correct. I thought it was the Palace Auburn Hills. Though. No, I'm thinking of Confidential, Alive 3. Right. That's and nice. uh, I might be wrong, but I feel like Cobo Hall is the palace of Auburn Hills. I think no. they ended up being the name. Or was it like across the street or something? No, it's a little little farther away. Oh, okay. But Cobo... Uh, the, isn't that the Michigan Palace? Is that a, Or is that a different place altogether? I think that's the same. Because yeah. Cobo's gone now, too. Right. Yeah. That's what it was. I think in one of those... Uh, Kissologies. Paul says that in one, maybe the Hot in the Shade concert where they're playing the Palace, and he says he says we used to play Cobo Hall, which was right across the street or something like that. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's do a guitarist again because I'm sure I'll mess that one up. <laughs> okay. When Ace shot a rocket out of his guitar on the Return of Kiss tour, what was he shooting at? 
his smoking guitar. Nothing. He just shot it into the air. A light in the lighting rig. He didn't use the rocket trick at all on the Return of Kiss tour. Or the idiot in the crowd with a laser pointer. <laughs> well, I was going to say Gene, but that wasn't one of the choices. <laughs> um, a uh, lighting rig. Incorrect. That's what they do with it now, though. Oh, man. <laughs> I see your gizmo. Aha. He was shooting at his fl- uh, smoking guitar. Correct. So let's do studio albums. Yay, where are we at here? Oh, this will be the last studio albums question. Okay. <laughs> I knew you were going to get this one. Because <laughs> you loved this, this question so much in the last one, too. Oh, geez. How many songs from Kiss, the first album, were re-recorded for the second disc of Sonic Boom? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Three, one, four, two, or none. And even though I know that's incorrect, I stand by this answer, seeing as how I refuse to acknowledge the second disc of Sonic Boom. Well, that would be what I would like to answer, but... (laughs) Um, And? I'm going to go with three. Incorrect. Brent? Uh, What was the other choices? (laughs) One, four, or two. Four. Also incorrect. Uh, yep, it was two. Believe it or not, it's only Deuce and Black Diamond. Wow. Good God. Okay, so studio albums is out. Everything else should still be good. Okay. It's Branton, right? Or me? No, uh, it's Branton, duh. Jeez. <sighs> uh, studio albums. Oh, that's the one that's out now. Oh, what was the other one? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the only one that's out. They're all... Oh, okay. Uh, Let's do quotes again. Okay, this is the last quotes question. Who said, I can't wait to get out. It's been much too long. I don't like being home. I'd rather play. This tour is going to be really big. We're going to have the biggest show we can have. It's going to be different, not like the old Kiss shows. Eric Singer... Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Eric Carr, or Kenny from South Park? Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say probably an answer that it sounds right, but it's probably not right. Paul Stanley. Incorrect. Gene. Also incorrect. No. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was Eric Carr. <laughs> wow. What tour was that? Uh, actually, I, I'm not sure. that I looked up, uh, there was a page where you can just look up quotes and you could type in people's names and it would give you a bunch of quotes from them. Wow. But yeah, I actually purposely included that whole quote because it seemed like something Gene would say. It really did. <laughs> it, 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 was. it was probably, my guess would be the Creatures of the Night tour after he was on The Elder that didn't do anything. Yeah, it could Un- be. Unmasked was pretty big though, but as far as the stage show, it probably it was probably Creatures, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, because Creatures would probably be the only one I could think of that Eric was a part of that would be anywhere close to being you know, bigger and badder. And, and that was that. the 10th anniversary tour, too. I hope he wasn't talking about the Hot in the Shade tour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I just found the website where I found that quote. Let me see if it says where that came from. Don't forget, Brandy, you still have a skip, too. Oh, yeah. I should have skipped all of mine, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so cold down here, my brain is froze. Right. I feel you. I think I just had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I see your part in your hair different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing the citation. Where's your Eric Carr wig at? Anyway. The fox wig. You need to put your fox wig on. It's prob- I think it's in the box right there with the other yeah. stuff. Fox in the box. <laughs> <laughs> it's just waiting to be used again. Yes. You ever get makeup on that? Oh, yeah. I've got... I need to get that off. 
Um, I haven't been able to figure it out yet. Because <laughs> would makeup remover, would that actually work on a wig? I don't think so. <laughs> uh. See? Oh, yeah. Big time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> looks like we got a couple uh, streaks down the side like Ace used to do. Yeah, like... Yeah. It even looks like I have gray hairs in it because there's like makeup in the actual hair from where it sticks to my face. Maybe you could just be Ace from the first album. <laughs> yeah, I might as well. Cause it's like, I know it ain't really showing on there. but It actually looks purple on my end. <laughs> well, that's my, that, that's my Prince wig behind it. But... <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, I, I think before we did that last show, I think I had Amy try to help me get most of that as we could out but <laughs> as you can see it didn't really matter because it was right back in there anyway well, right special order that wig online i ended up finding it on ebay um i was gonna say if it was a place that sold them you know exclusively then you could just get another one if they didn't cost you much well i bought the one at uh foy's and then that wasn't really right and then um it ended up being too like froey in a way, so then we took that back, and then I, I was looking all over everywhere. You know, you, you know what you should do is you should get one of those fox heads and just put Eric's makeup on it. <laughs> 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 no, I should get a mannequin and <laughs> dress it up in the costume when I'm not using it. Oh, I thought you meant and put it behind the drums. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I don't even hear the drums. What's going on back there? Oh, it's <laughs> yeah, looking at it up close, I'm definitely going to need to try to clean a, clean the hair out or get a whole new wig. Cause it That's literally, what she said. <laughs> it, it, it literally looks like gray hairs in here. <laughs> You're just getting old before your time. That, that's what it is. The old silver fox. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we even at? We have four huh? questions left to go, and the score is six to two. So if Branton can answer all four of these questions correctly, we'll have a tie game. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that happening. Is it whose turn is it? That is an excellent question. Uh, what was the? It was a quotes one we just did, right? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Because we were talking about Eric Carr. Right, I think it was Branton's question, so it should be your turn. Okay, let's do songs. Okay, this is the last songs question. Which of the following lyrics come from the Kiss song Two Timer? So you been to the market and the meat looks good tonight? Or don't make me chase you because the author lied? Or, she thinks she's high fashion, she thinks she's divine. Or, just pretend I'm only a friend and disappear into the night. Or, you're the chimney and I'm Mr. Claus and I've got just the gift for you. <laughs> uh, she thinks she's high fashion and thinks she looks divine. Indeed. And that's what I keep telling her. Yeah. I thought uh, I thought my fifth answer there was a good cross between log in the fireplace and let me lick your candy cane or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's a great look. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Branton. I think all we've got left is Kiss guitars and Kiss Sho and toes. shoes. Yeah. Let's go with guitars because <clears throat> at this point I've already lost. I think. Okay, so this is it for guitars. We'll have two more questions left in shows after this one. Which of the following guitar companies has never made an act space for Gene Simmons? Jackson, Spectre, Kramer, Court, or the Stubborn Brothers, who were so stubborn that their company slogan is, we refuse to make act spaces for Gene Simmons. <laughs> um, court. Incorrect. Spectre. Indeed. Court was the first one, wasn't it? Or no, Jackson. 
uh, actually, Kramer was the official first, although that Valdez one is the one he was on stage with, but Valdez wasn't really a guitar company. It was just that guy. Ah. Uh. And then and then that Steve Carr guy made the really weird-looking one. But yeah, Kramer made the first official one. So, was that the last guitar question? Yes. So all we have left, so, left now is shows. All right, so shows. Okay. At a show in Cobo Hall in 1976, Gene Simmons accidentally began to sing the lyrics for Rock and Roll All Night during what song? Let Me Go Rock and Roll. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> My fifth answer for that one was Rock and Roll All Night. <laughs> <laughs> You show us that the thing of love. The better be the men of love. <laughs> All right, Brent, final question here. At what venue did Kiss sell out four shows within minutes of tickets going on sale in 1996? Was it the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater, Madison Square Garden, the Palace of Auburn Hills, Castle Donington, or this is a trick question and Kiss has never sold out any shows ever? Madison Square Garden. Correct. Okay. That was, that was what, what did it say, four hours? Four shows within minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, they tried to book a fifth show, I read, and, and uh, the garden wouldn't let them. Didn't, didn't the uh, Tiger Stadium sell out in almost the same amount of time or something like that? Or I even, think so. Yeah, that's, man, <laughs> Well, I think one of those, there's a bootleg video of one of those shows from Madison Square Garden where they do Skater Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, here we go. <clears throat> Finally, with a score of 9 to 3, somebody took down the reigning champ. <laughs> It's that guy with a weird wig on his head. Or I guess the weird hairdo, I should say. I'm Andre the Giant. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> well, Brandon, your worst nightmares came to fruition. You have to come up with questions. Oh. <laughs> Let's see what my prize says. <laughs> Did we ever post those other ones? I don't remember. I in the video, I think. Yeah, I put them in the video. Oh. I never ended up posting them on the page. Oh, okay. Has successfully got up and got his grandma out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Their study for old Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to frame that, <laughs> I, even though I lost. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what play old Jim is in that I need to be his understudy. I feel like that would be some good stuff. Yeah, someone asked Gene about the lyrics to that song, and he goes, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> you guys know uh, Dad's Young in the Plastic thing that he does, where uh, for a long time, actually, I think it's either all of the characters or most of the characters were named after Kiss references. And one of the very first characters from the first episode forward is old Jim. And he's <laughs> one of the best characters in the whole series. It's hilarious. You could probably ask Gene about any song that he did. He probably don't know what it's about. <laughs> did you tell Brandon about that thing next week? You guys should come. Oh, yeah. What's yep. that? Uh, Dad's doing a, uh, like a movie night for the most recent... Young and the Plastic episodes here at my place downstairs. A movie night, huh? Yeah. Gonna, I don't, maybe four or five episodes. They're all short. They're not super long, but. So it's, uh, you why bring your own up? <laughs> to look up the events and see if I can find that. There it is. Sheesh, I haven't even. Mark that I'm going to it. <laughs> Sorry, guys, can't make it, even though it's at my place. 
So, what did you guys over the years? Did, what did what's your uh, translation of what Deuce means? The song. For me, I've always thought it meant like the guy busts his ass working hard. He comes home. He's tired, and all he wants is some some from his wife and he's working so hard why not give it to him twice you know that's the way i've always kind of looked at it yeah that's sort of sort of what i get yeah because you know i've heard people say it's reference to uh you know dropping a deuce it's like well <laughs> yeah you can do that twice but i've there's nothing in that song that to me sounds anything like dropping a deuce. <laughs> no, I don't think he was even thinking like that at all. Yeah, they not even during uh, nothing lose. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, the fu it's funny the line where it says get up and get your grandma out of here. I wonder if that was a reference to someone, you know, like his grandma because you know, like he's in a rock band and this kind of, you know, because subconsciously when you write songs, you get a lot of that stuff that just comes out and you don't know where it comes from. And I just wonder if that was, I mean, he probably couldn't say because he don't know. Yeah, he's he, he never really gives like a, it's always like, oh, interpret it the way you want to interpret it. Right. And well, I have a book here somewhere that gives the descriptions of all the songs and I, I'm going to have to get that out and look now to see if it says anything about that. So I interpret it that way, and as usual, it goes to the filthy side of things. And <laughs> yes, because <laughs> you're filthy. <laughs> By the way, when I was talking about that John Five being on uh, that Nikki Six thing. Uh, he was saying that he uh, already ordered, or no, Nikki was saying he already ordered his Kiss Coffin. <laughs> and he said he ordered the Peter Chris one, or the Catman one. It's like, I didn't realize that you could do that. I didn't either, unless he was trying to be funny. <laughs> well, he said he was going to get the Ace, or the Spaceman one, but he decided to get the Cat one. So, mm -hmm. he wasn't laughing, so it's like, hmm, that's odd. I never knew they had individual ones. Oh, no. I didn't either. Speaking of things dying, didn't he announce that 6 a.m. is done now? Uh, Six Sense is done. Six Sense, okay. Yeah, his show is, is over. Oh, okay, I thought... As of this year, yeah. Okay, I thought... As uh, of 2017. <clears throat> Forgetting what year it is now. I thought it was the most misread it or something. Well, I've heard some of their material, and I don't care much for it. Right. Um, but that's just probably me. I'm sure there's a, a fan base. Uh, aside from them being Motley Crue fans, you know. Because uh, DJ from Guns N' Roses, he's a great guitarist. DJ Ashba. Yeah. I don't know who the vocalist is in that band right off. Yeah, uh, some, some, some guy. <laughs> His really, honestly, is a voice that I've never cared for. Really? Yeah. I, I've, I've heard Guns N' Roses songs that I like, but I can't listen to too much of his voice. Same with ACDC, same with Poison. Uh, you know, like, I like the stuff that I hear, but I can't listen to too much. I just get so annoyed by the voice that I can't handle anymore. Hmm. I think for a future show, we could, uh, and I don't think we've done this, Make up uh, what we're sort of saying about how you guys could make a list of songs you could do for the tribute band that's not Kiss songs. Uh -huh. We could make a, a, an episode of <clears throat> a track listing or an album. We'd like to see um, other bands do Kiss songs and what other bands and what songs. That would be cool. Yeah, and I, I wish that was real. Yeah, didn't we talk about that sort of like a... Um, I think we talked about it. I don't think we actually have done an episode yet. Yeah. We're also talking about uh, doing a, an album of what songs we'd like to see Kiss do in a you know in a covers album too. Right. That would be another episode. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Um, again, happy New Year to everyone. Hope everyone uh, makes this year count. So, 
Uh, we got some uh, big things in store for the podcast coming up, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, again, like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube page. Anything you guys wanted to finish with real quick? Um, well, you know your man is working hard. So he's worth a deuce. So give us some deuce subscribing. You got nothing to lose. That's true. <laughs> All right, everyone. So thanks for watching. See you guys next week.